Hello, my name is Chris Shields, and I conducted an interview with Lauren Peeler, uh, who is a program coordinator at CASA of Northeast Tennessee, on the issues of hunger, homelessness, and poverty, um, and how she sees these issues in, uh, as part of the CASA organization, and how they deal with them, and how they affect um, people. Uh, basically, CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. Uh, it is a national organization, but they're, they have branches really everywhere. And it's nonprofit, and they support community volunteers to advocate for children who are in the court system as a result of abuse or neglect. The advocates are appointed by judges to investigate and make recommendations as to what is in the best interest of the child with their primary goal being to see that the child is in a safe permanent home as quickly as possible. Um, the volunteers uh, go through a training course. Um, they learn how to investigate, how to do a, write a report, um, then they, they get a case. They investigate the case. They talk to everybody involved in the child's life, um, potential placement. Um, they investigate those, and they submit a re report directly to the judge, who reviews it and makes a ruling. A lot of times on some of the information that Casa can that Casa can find. Okay, the role of poverty in CASA cases. Miss um, Peeler said that the majority of the CASA children that they are assigned to come from um, lower income families. Um, a lot of times families uh, of uh, children of single parents. Um, and she said it's a, really a contributor a lot of times to these neglect or abuse cases because the basic needs of a child aren't being met because of um, financial issues with a parent. Because poverty can affect the well-being of a child and therefore potential placement, CASA can direct families to community resources to meet necessary needs of a child. These community resources include food banks, church-based church ministries, and free mental health counseling services, money management courses, parenting classes, and rehabilitation programs. Um, I thought the money management course was interesting. I didn't even really know that they had those, and she told me that they were that they were offered free different places in the community. And basically, they teach people how to manage their money better to meet the basic needs of their family. Um, while many of these classes are geared towards lower income families, uh, really anybody that thinks they have an issue with money management can take them. And uh, Ms. Peeler said they're very beneficial to a lot of the parents that, that get in these, um, you know, to meet, meet their child's needs better. One of the new resources CASA is using is um, CASA's Closet. And basically, it's just for CASA families. And a lot of times, they'll get cases where, um, you know, they'll have an older child that doesn't have his own bed, and, that, and he's, sleeping, he's sleeping on a couch, or he's sleeping with another sibling, and um, CASA's Closet accepts donations. Um, and so they can help some of these families get these things that they need. Uh, Ms. Peeler uh, often discuss a child's basic needs, so I had asked her, you know, what really, what, what does that consist of? And she said that for really each juvenile judge that it's different. Some, you know, some are a little bit more picky on the educational needs. Um, some are more picky on the physical needs. She said it, it depends, but basically these needs are physical and environmental needs, which are food, clothing, and shelter. Medical needs um, that the child is being, 
the child has medical care, he's being seen by a doctor regularly. Regularly, if he has any kind of ailment that that's being treated, um, and educational needs, or, or that he's that the child is being taken to school on time, that he's at school, and that he's doing well, and that he's monitored at home. Um, most of the homeless cases cost of volunteers are assigned to often deal with children and a single parent, much like poverty. Uh, the most common situation is a parent and their child bouncing around from different homes of a family member or friends. Um, just apartment hopping or whatever it be, but not really a child and his parent not really having a place to, um, I guess, call their own. Um, but she said that they've had cases of families living on the street or living outside in a tent or living in a car. Um, with these children, she said most of the time they are immediately ordered into custody by the court due to their environmental needs not being met. Um, once this happens, then the parent can petition the court for custody back, which at that point CASA will become involved with the parent to investigate whether these needs are being met and also to point them in direction to help meet their housing needs. And she says a lot of times that there, there's um, one of the one of the top ones I guess they they point them towards is the housing authority. Uh, CASA volunteers are trained to inspect a home to make sure appropriate food is available uh, as far as the hunger issue goes. Um, I know that they said that a lot of times some of their volunteers will ask in a home visit to see inside of the fridge or the cabinets to see if there's appropriate food for a child. Um, a lot of times uh, a child's health is questioned by whether it be a CPS or a CASA worker or the court or a guardian ad litem. Um, that can be from malnourishment or obesity and she said that the court has actually ordered before that the child be put on a healthier diet to meet the his nutritional needs that he's not getting. Okay and she wanted me to tell everybody that they're always looking for more volunteers. Um, the Northeast Tennessee CASA covers Washington County Juvenile Court, um, Johnson City Juvenile Court, the Greenville Juvenile Court, and um, Unicoi County Juvenile Court. So if you would like to be a volunteer, I have listed the phone number and the email. You can email those. They said that the next training session for new volunteers will begin August 13th. And you can also find additional information regarding CASA at the web address listed at the bottom. Thank you very much.